Is that it? Dudes, how you doing? Welcome back. So today we have headphone. No, we got RAM. Sorry, headphone issues fixed. Uh, we got a full, no, not full, front doors. I can't speak today. We got front doors and a full windshield. We are already partway through the front doors. Where have you been? We're going to be plugging away here, jumping into it. Um, we were on the fence of doing a full windshield or not, but now we are. We're going to be doing the full windshield with front doors. So obviously the most important thing that you have to watch out for is water running down the sides to that BCM module. Every one of these that I do, I will make you guys know about it because I don't want you guys to screw them up. Hey, how's it going? It's going, it's going good. Do you ever need, do you ever need to go to the bathroom live? Of course, you just power through it. Double stream, we got one tomorrow too. So I totally forgot to put a lot of the camera stuff on the charger. So that's, uh, that's a problem. We'll figure it out. I got a couple things charging up real quick. Um, shouldn't be that bad. We're probably gonna have to swap a battery midstream though. So this guy, this, this, one of these big old batteries that sits on top, both of them are currently dead. <sighs> that's what happens. Get distracted, forget to put it on the charger. Same thing for my microphone, which is, I think, the most sad. What is going on? We have black and black. Good stuff. Oh, where's that? Where's that stuff? Oh, I forgot. I got some stuff I got to hook up. There's somebody that parked their trailer out back, right in my parking spots. I've been trying to figure out all morning. Like, they, they have a business on it, but I've been calling them, and they're not picking up their phone. They just dump their trailer in my parking spots. I don't use them a whole lot, but it annoys me. You only have the truck today? Only have the truck today. Minus all the other stuff that I have to do. Yeah, I've been spacing things out to one a day for the most part because it's, it's been kind of tricky. Um, being able to spend enough time on here and then also make sure the job gets done right, um, I can do two of them, but I was always rushing. So things slowed down in the wintertime, so I've just been spacing out one per day. And I got to say, I really like it. I really like it, but... Obviously, it doesn't quite, <laughs> it's a shop on one car a day. <laughs> but it's relaxing. I like it being relaxing. Um, Got to go to bed as I'm working in the morning at 2.30 a.m. here in Australia. Damn. Keep up the great streams. Good night. We'll watch later. Thank you, sir. Good to have you pop in, Dean. <laughs> Just yell everything you do and keep the current camera angle. <laughs> hey guys, over here! I'm gonna do some shit! This is one of the most frustrating things to try and hook up. When you have to run on an internal battery. So, for the GoPro, in order to get HDMI out to this crazy thing, I did a video on it, which nobody watched, um... This, this thing right here. Um, this is what does wireless HDMI. So GoPro, wireless HDMI. But to get that, to get that connector, you need to put it in this thing. This is the media mod. Um, but doing that then traps the battery inside the media mod to where you have to take the legs, flip them down, open it up, pull it out. It's super annoying. Um, also because you actually have to screw this thing onto the mount. Like, I don't know why this is the GoPro connector, but you put these in here and then you literally have to like screw it together. It just, it's not fast. It's not fast. It's not fast at all. Yeah. 
So why would I tint the windshield? Is that legal? Well, if you don't like it, then don't do it. Some people like it. I like it. So I'm going to do it. It's legal with a doctor's note, yes. I tried to super chat three times, and it won't work. Sad face. I appreciate the message. I'll treat your message as a super chat. Thank you. Do you ever get streaks slash smudges but not fingerprints showing after you do a full windshield job? Um, yeah. Yeah, you can when you first start doing reverse roll installs. If so, what's the issue? Um, it sounds like your issue is air pockets. So as you're squeegeeing out that windshield, um, you need to sweep everything out evenly. If air, like, if you squeegee a section and then an air pocket shoots back into it and then you just keep squeegeeing over it, you're just squeegeeing over dry. And then it's going to be no good. It's going to leave, like, smeary air streaks. Sounds like it's your problem. It's your problem. If you remind me, I can illustrate it better on this one. I'm not going to show you a streaky smudge, but I'm going to show you how they happen. Just tinted a D11 dozer, carbon 5, 1200. Nice, very nice. You know, I kind of know what that is from watching Gold Rush. That's how, that, oh wait, let me make sure this is going. I'm getting ahead of myself. The D11 dozer. They talk about them all the time. I love Gold Rush. I do too, man. I watch that show every week. We skip through the, the one guy that can't hack it. <laughs> I don't know anything about the equipment, really, other than what I learned on that show. There we go. But I watch it every week. Gold Rush. Yep, exactly. Parker is my favorite. Yeah, he's still on it. Todd, uh, Todd Hoffman, he's been off of it for a long time. That was just a disaster. This just isn't charged enough. All right, we gotta do we gotta do a backup microphone here. Okay, give me give me a second with the audio. Hello. Hello. Okay. Um, this audio is not going to be ideal, but it's all we got to go on right now. So just bear with me for this part. It's going to be a little rough compared to the other one. Um, okay. Audio is good. The audio sounds like ass. <laughs> Thanks. Compared to the other microphone, I know. Okay, so we are already partway through this. Oh, I'm glad you guys like Gold Rush. I like that show too. We watch it every week. The, I'm trying to, I, I can't even remember his name, but there was like the, the guy that's newest to the show he was having some real, real rough times both seasons, and we just can't watch him. So we always skip those parts, but we watch everybody else. So Tony Beats is great. Parker, of course. Parker, Parker's funny now. He just looks upset every week at his gold totals. Like, he half smiles. He's just like, oh, we only got, like, $500,000 this week. What the fuck am I doing with my life? Yeah, the, the, yeah. <laughs> he's very happy, he's got a military team, and he's very positive, and then he just keeps not finding anything. <laughs> he's the new Todd Hoffman.
Well, yeah. Of course Parker had a good start to it. But he's doing good. You can see how difficult it is to do halfway decent. Like, Rick Ness knew everything from all the training that he had working with him and then he's just been bombing. He's doing better now, but it's just funny. It's a funny show. Anyways, what's to watch out for? Oh good, you read the title. So BCM on these, um, any new RAM. So this model RAM here, it's like 2019 and up. There are, uh, there's a BCM body control module. It's a big white electric box that water will just run to and you need to be real careful. So when I tell people to cover everything up, I mean cover everything up. Don't take half measures because people that take half measures on these will destroy them. So it's real easy to get to. It's one of the easiest things to fix um, in terms of like protecting it. So it's gonna be up here and there's no paneling in the way. So we'll get to it, we'll cover it up like we do literally on every stream that we've ever done on one of these things. If you've watched these streams before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're new, there's a dedicated video on the subject, but nobody looks it up until after they've had a problem, so. <laughs> and even then, they'll just not do these trucks. Most people will be scared of these trucks. They'll be like, yeah, they're electrical nightmares, which they can be, so just don't be dumb and you'll be fine. For the windshield. So we're gonna do the doors and then we're gonna get to the windshield. So people turn them away for the windshields, which it's such a significant part of my business here. So that's why I always do them. Like it's figured out how to address the issue. with a comment. <laughs> yeah, just tell people don't be dumb. Good to know. Good, very good. Yes. They are, they're real straightforward. It looks like this one was tinted before. There's like some glue streaks on here. So there's, it's hard to see right now, but there's like those pull lines right here, right here, and a couple other little spots. So we'll get those scraped off. No big deal, it's light. But it's nice to know that it was tinted at one point because then you treat it like it has been tinted. Sometimes I, I won't use a razor blade, I'll just scrape over it. But when I know there has been glue on it at one point, you have to just cleanly scrape everything. Oh, 
Oh yeah, look at that. See this? Wow, that is some clear stuff. That's definitely tent related, whatever that is. Looked like a liner though, which was weird. Have you ever hit the hazard lights? Yeah, I actually did in that video. It freaked me out really bad. So the hazard button is right here. It's real easy to just bump it with your elbow or something. <laughs> hmm. Upcharge for removal. That, there's some light glue. <laughs> Charge for the removal! What removal? There's just some, like I said, there's some light glue here. It's a courtesy, man. <laughs> it's, maybe it's just charge enough. Charge enough to feel like whatever work that you're putting in is well deserved. So then you won't nickel and dime all the little stuff. I don't know. <laughs> nope, doesn't matter, you gotta upcharge. <laughs> like, ugh. I had to back up the car before I had to pull it into the parking, into the garage. What a chore. Upcharge. Oh, there's a sticker on the door. Upcharge. Oh, I fell. Upcharge. Upcharge for recording the car. Good God. That's right. Let's see it. Are there any stickers? There's no stickers. There's no stickers. Upcharge. <laughs> I like it. That's a new business model. Just upcharge all the things. That's right. And to make a squeegee pass, like an extra squeegee pass, oh, definitely upcharge for that one. Oh, this stuff sticks to glass so bad. Yummy. Are you using TintWiz to send out reminders? No. I haven't needed to send out reminders. I mean, it's a helpful thing to do. But when people leave deposits, I think it's that's been the most helpful. Um, it's just... They, I'm waiting on a feature. As soon as they accept deposits through their platform, then then we'll be using it for that. So I use them for a lot of things. Just, I'm like, slightly annoyed that I'm not using the, the like I'm, I'm annoyed that I'm not taking advantage of this the calendar um but the only reason is because that gets kind of automatically organized through wix so i use it for pretty much everything else I'd be very happy once i get deposits
Are you taking advantage of the inflation price increases? <laughs> It's a it's an interesting way to put it. Um, yeah, I've had to raise prices. But it's mostly for for my entry, not as much for the higher end stuff. So uh, you guys know for a long time, my starting was like 240 for a full vehicle um, without a windshield. So now I, I've been quoting like 290. Um, it was like 280 for full SUVs and stuff. So now I've just been like, ah, just pretty much everything starting full without a windshield is 290. But a big reason for that too isn't just because those are more expensive or the stuff is more expensive it's just I the way that I've been tinting is putting a lot more time into everything so I've always felt like the base price should be higher <laughs> You're high as fuck. <laughs> no, it's just... There's actually other shops that are starting higher than, than even that, so it's not outlandish here. I think it's funny, literally the glass shop that I was tinning at um, they were typically 300 starting, so I don't know. It's it's not outlandish. <laughs> it's comparable to some places. Yeah, big part of it's demographic based. Cost of living is expensive here too. I mean, at the time they were like 250, but then when things got really busy, they raised their prices to an average like 280 to 300, I think. So it's not even that, really that outlandish, so. Just some areas it sounds quite a bit more. It's more about boosting the starting price, because if I'm gonna spend three hours on a car, obviously that needs to make sense. this seal just to the top it's like a wedge shape there we go all that air out how's the fan tip Fan tip's been good. Um, yeah, I would go back to the cone tip. I think having both is ideal. I mean, for the majority of things, fan tip is, is great. Um, but there's certain situations that having that cone tip and being able to turn it into a laser beam really helps. So, they both got their pros and cons. Isn't 
nice. Let me double check this. Good God. What I wanted to do, let's just double check this. Pulled it out of 35, definitely looks like 35. Or light. I've been doing a lot of five. See, Pro Classic 35. I just wanna make sure. Yep, okay. <laughs> it's been a minute since I've put 35 on RAM front doors. So I was just making sure everything's right. It's right. Yeah, we're doing 35 on the front and then we're doing uh, 50 on the windshield. Cool. There's one. Bam. Cannon. Oh, can't even use it. See, this is a microphone. This Antonio is Super charging. <laughs> Don't get confused with five and thirty-five. Antonio, Antonio with the five, thank you. I don't see a message, but thank you. Thank you so much for the five, I really appreciate that. I hate when they ask for 35, why even bother? I have 1% all around and 15 on the full shield. <laughs> we are just two very different shops. <laughs> That always makes me laugh. Like, not everybody is looking to get incredibly dark windows. 35 is pointless, it's not. Demographics, man, it depends on where you are and who you're tending for. <laughs> this is funny. I have 1%, 15 on the windshield. If you're not doing triple five, what the hell are you even doing? <laughs> 35 is just like ceramic for old people. <laughs> no. Oh God, I'm old. That's what I put on my own. A big reason is the demo vehicle, too. 20 is the most popular. A good amount of people still get 35. And it usually depends on the windshield. So I think a really nice look, and this is what I did on my own, my own van. I did 35 on the front and 50 on the windshield. It depends on the look here you're going for. I see middle-aged. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Money's the same, don't care. There's a fair amount of shops like that. I had a guy that was messaging me about doing five on his windshield. I don't know if it was real though. There's an out-of-state area code, too. <laughs> Alligator window teeth super chat is four dollars and ninety-nine cents. I can tell you exactly what you are Gator. not doing if you're double tint and Gator with the five, I can tell I can dot, tell you exactly what you're right. not doing if you double tint and 15 on the windshield, seeing at night. <laughs> Very true. This is a very polarizing topic. 
Although it's not as polarizing in the group as what it used to be. There are people, they, once in a very long time, somebody posts like a 5% windshield and everybody would freak out. Now it's happened so many times that people just call them a dumbass and move on. I think there's a sensible thing that you want to take on for your own business as far as liability goes and some people like it, some people don't. Oh, but gate, uh, Daniel Raymer oh, Super shit, Shatted another one. Good God. Cents. Wow, Tint Studio is now an international live stream. From Asia to Europe to South America's islands, south of the border to Canada. The red carpet of live stream. <laughs> Daniel Reyna with a 10. Thank you. Tin Studio is not an international live stream from Asia to Europe, South America, islands, south, border to Canada, red carpet live stream. <laughs> Thank you so much for the 10. I don't know if it's that prestigious, but there are people that watch it and they're quite far away. Or is it is it a big deal now because we hit 100,000? There we go. That's why I did not go there with that comment. Just trying to make some smiles, not get into the weeds. Yeah, same here. I appreciate that. It is a very polarizing thing. Like, your business is your business. We can definitely talk about differences. I think there's stupid things to do, but hey, that's why my business is my business and not your business. Too old. Um, comes down to the demographic. Yes. Yes, that plays a big key. My charger has big defroster lines. Yeah, chargers, challengers, um, 300s, they all have, they all have big defroster lines. So, um, on those, what I do is I turn on the defrosters before I put the tint on them, and that'll help keep all the air pockets down. So keep that in mind when you go to tint those. But yeah, you'll tint right over the defrosters. That's why you should educate the kids. <laughs> uh. There's only so much that's gonna come of it. I mean, now you're kind of seeing a pretty awesome and a little bit dangerous trend with all the clear on the inside, dark on the outside posts, but people are gonna do what people are gonna do. You're not gonna, you're not necessarily gonna educate them out of going super dark, like it's just, They'll find a place to do it. They'll get pulled over for it. Hopefully we won't get in an accident. It's just, it's just how people are though. But I don't go below 35. Aw, that's so cool. Uh, thank you, Matt, been following for a while. You've helped me know my worth. I don't feel bad for going up. Keep it up. Dude, that's awesome. 
I really like to hear that. I felt the same a long time ago. I've worked at a bunch of shops that were, you know, charging anywhere from like 150 bucks. Like, I didn't know. <laughs> and seems like they didn't know either and tint was tint and, you know, for a lot of companies, it, it is essentially just like a mechanic type skill. It's like, oh yeah, we have a garage, we pull in cars, we should offer window tint. And so they treat it like all their other services. And it can be that way, but it doesn't have to be that way. There's a, in a good job, there's a lot of skill. And it takes you a lot of time and frustration to learn that skill, so. You can definitely charge more for it, or you can not charge more for it. It's up to you. But this is just one avenue that's out there. Someone explained the TikTok. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I won't look at it because I refuse to get the app. <laughs> Now you sound old. <laughs> so there's a, there's a, a meme going around and a lot of shops seem to be taking advantage of it. Somebody posted a video with basically like showing limo on the outside and then said clear on the inside. But they said it's because of ceramic. So, there's been so many, there's been so many people now calling around asking specifically about ceramic. I think it's amazing, but it's misleading, so. If you can just shut up and say, yep, yep, we got it, that's exactly what it does, mm-hmm, yep, this is what it costs, it's the most expensive stuff, and then when you do one of those jobs, the thing is 5%, most of the time isn't hard to see out of anyways. So it's just when it gets to certain conditions that it gets a little tricky, especially when you have crappy headlights, so. Okay, we gotta prep this windshield. So the smarter thing when you're doing one of these windshields is to prep it before you do the doors, but we ended up doing the doors and then deciding to do the windshield, so. <sighs> Bring your ass on. Oh, be nice or I'll mute you. I don't know if that was mean or not, but. All right, so let me start prepping the outside of the windshield because that's going to take the longest to dry. Oh, I don't know that one. I thought you were getting in an argument with somebody. I don't know. I hear some stuff and then I read some other ones. Just as long as everything's friendly. So we're gonna prep this. This is the part, or this is the, uh, the windshield is what you gotta be careful about on these trucks. So we're gonna take a little bit of time to prep it and then we'll cover up the BCM and then we'll put a rope in it and it'll be all the more better for it. These doors turned out nice.
I did three layers of two and a half percent. That was kind of funny. That's the darkest I've seen. <laughs> Hang on one sec. Oh, okay. Hello, Tint Studio, how can I help you? Yeah, what kind of vehicle? 2005 Impala, uh, everything with the windshield or without? With the windshield would be 420. No problem, have a good one. 2009 Impala, yeah, with the windshield. That's, I'm, I'm too high for that. For that. I know that one. All right, so we're gonna put some glass aid on this. I was trying to catch up on a couple little things. I gotta call somebody back. So this has this camera here and we're just gonna make a straight line. Stay away from all the camera modules. Don't cover up where they're supposed to go. You don't want them to not do what they're supposed to do. Recalibrations, any of that stuff. Yeah, don't mess with the camera systems. Those things get expensive. They're starting to put them on everything. Everything's gonna require some sort of, I think they're called ADAS systems. Like by a certain year. So they're gonna have them on every windshield, which is gonna make glass replacement even more expensive. It's all gonna be more expensive for a little while anyways. So it used to cost a couple hundred bucks to fix. It's now gonna be like $800. Hooray. How many roll or how many windshields can you get out of a roll? Um, typically about ten. It's so hundred feet long. You use about nine to ten feet because it's got to go around the whole thing, and it depends on the cutouts. We need something. We need a dryer sheet. Where is that? I don't know why I still leave them here. Okay, so let's prep this. And one thing that we can do while the windshield is drying, uh, we can prep the inside so we're not just losing time. triage better be signed um, if you get one and it's not uh, just shoot me an email I'll get you one that is I haven't signed them on every order because I, I don't know who wants them and who doesn't so I've been sending 
typically, if I if I do, I just send an extra one in. So I've been doing that with a bunch of orders, just adding extra ones, but I don't know. Some people don't order those. I don't know if some people really want me to write on them or not. Okay, so batteries are being batteries. That's good. How much can you shrink film before it gives out? When you do one piece eyebrows and it bunches in the middle. Um, that just, it really depends on the film and your skill. You can push film pretty far, but some films are gonna shrink a little easier and some films just aren't, so. You just kinda learn by trying and then Windows, Windows will keep on testing you. Where is, God, I am just scatterbrained today. All right, so BCM, let's put the light here. And let's put this here. How's that? This guy, see this guy right here? That's the BCM. I've got better videos that show it better. Um, so take some rags and real easy, you're just gonna fish them up here and just kind of rest them over the wires. Just keep it all bunched up. That way if water happens to run down anywhere, uh, it'll hopefully hit the rags and then you won't have it running into a box that's it that's literally it so bcm covered so if anybody can't take the seconds to do that i don't know what's wrong with you it's the big it's the big white box that's right up there. Just fish some rags up there. That's all you need to do for covering uh, that much of the BCM. The rest of it's gonna be the dash. So speaker grills, the seam here, all that should be covered. Water's gonna sneak through somewhere. So if it gets past here, it'll get collected there. But hopefully this is enough up here and you don't need those down there but extra precaution it takes seconds to do so do it oh there's somebody else's let's get this in place this is not this is not a tool to do this Oh. <laughs> Can we fix it? Hey, nice. Um, the green triad is so good. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. How much? When I use a dryer sheet, my film doesn't want to stick or it sticks for seconds and then loosens. A um, couple things. So it could be either overspray on the windows that you're tinting. So some of them will have, like they'll feel gritty. If the window on the outside feels gritty, that's gonna let air back in under your dryer sheet. The other is what dryer sheets are you using? The cheap dollar store ones and like generic ones really surprisingly have not been good. I don't know what it is about the better ones that work better, but like Snuggles or Bounce, those are typically the better ones to, to get. I use Snuggles right now. Or you can get um, dry shrink prep and your it'll stick a lot more. Gain, 
I haven't tried those, but that's good to know. Somebody likes gain. There's a whole lot of them to pick from. When you get a chance, it sent you a PM. Um, it's best to ask me questions here if you can, because I get a lot of direct messages and it's really hard to get to them. So that's why these are, are really a thing. So if you have a good, if you have a question or something, feel free to ask it here. So this is the Soak Shield OG. And we put the towel in. And what I like about doing it this way now is it'll typically keep... It'll keep the... Uh, towel usually push down a little bit more and then you get if you can get past that seal or past that dot matrix then it gives you a little bit more room just to tuck everything in so that towel doesn't then get in the way what air compressor oh that's an easy one it's this one true flat I only got that one I'm better off with getting a shop air compressor I was out of a home garage for a little while so I space and keeping everything on the wall was a big priority so you don't need anything fancy at all you can use a tire filler um, just make sure it goes up to like 100 psi 30 to 35 is is going to be pretty weak and there's plenty of them that that are very cheap that'll give you lots and lots of pressure and they're portable too Little tire ones, they're only this big. So for you mobile guys, just toss one of those in your truck when you're running around. And then you don't rely on anybody else's air. You don't have to go to like a gas station and fill it up. I've been hearing people do that. <laughs> they're real cheap, they're easy to get. And they work well. Do you ever peel the film putting the soak shield in? I have, yeah. Yeah, I haven't I haven't been a big fan of that. So when when you have both, like on some windshields you got a lot of room, and some you don't have much room at all. This is kind of one of those in between where it pinches, but it's not too bad. Um, an Audi would be an example of a really bad one, where the dots go so far past the dash and they have like this much space in between it. So I'll towel it and put a rope there and then when I go to install it, then I typically pull all that stuff out. Right before I go to install it, it's a little less safe. Um, Cause you wanna keep everything as covered up as you can, but you know, too much stuff in the way means that you can't tint the windshield. So I won't take a chance on these ones though. These ones have proven to be uh, real bad. Just pay attention to the Facebook groups. <laughs> Any problem windshields? Like this is really the biggest one and has been for a while. Not much else has really popped up. Like, I've heard something about Honda lately with the sensor on the dash. That I'm curious about. That's why you keep your ear to the, ear to the ground on the groups. You never know when somebody's going to run into a ca catastrophic issue and then a lot of people are really like, hey, yeah, happened to me too. And it's like, oh boy. That was the case with these. Does Dodge know so they can fix it in newer models? Oh, they don't care. There's, there's no reason for them to, to change it. So tinters have less, like, yeah, it's... <laughs> 
if it was like a maintenance issue or created a lot of um, what is that word recalls that's one thing but oh tinters are spraying too much water <laughs> yeah they don't care The fix is cover it up. That's it. It's really easy. New Range Rover Sport has super tight windshield at the bottom. Range Rovers just have really weird windshields altogether. But that's no fun. Like, the, the way that they design those windshields to be a little bit more vertical, and so much dash in the way on some of those things. It's crazy. And then they're uber expensive windshields too, because they have the lines. They're like heated windshields. So they got the super thin lines in them too. Woo. Don't want to screw those up. <laughs> Did a Jetta for the first time and I hated it. Yep. Yep, those aren't super fun. They always just take extra time. Those, a good number of Audis, they're, they're all kind of in the same category of like, they can be tinted just fine, but there's just a little bit more in the way of getting them done. They're just tight. So on those, I have no problem with just cutting them a little slimmer. So there's no gaps or anything, but the way to tuck in some tighter seals, just make it easier on yourself. Just don't tuck them as far down. They're usually fine. That bottom edge turns out cleaner and flatter because you didn't have to fight with anything. As long as everything covered, you're all right. Is this a felt card you're using? Yep. Yep, I really like these. They're just soft. They're like soft foam blocks. With like a, I mean, I call them foam blocks. I don't know if there's really a block of foam in there or not, but they're like covered in a soft felt wool material. So if there's anything underneath the film that could cause it to dig into your tent, this skips right over it. So one thing that used to happen was uh, I'd wipe off a windshield. This is before I squeegeed them off. Um, I just wipe them off with the towel, throw a dryer sheet, shrink them, cut them, call it a day. But I was moving through a lot of cars at the time and every once in a while, I was using a gold Teflon card and every once in a while you'd have a, um, like a speck of dirt or something. And so that hard card would hit it and rip right through the film. Well, you don't really need a hard card. So that's why I like the felt blocks. The Wagner is back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I picked a couple of them up. They're $26 now. Inflation, man. Wagners used to be like 20 and then like 21, 22, another 26. Oh my God. I like these much better. It going from this to a um, 
to the Craftsman, a Porter cable. This will feel like a toy, but this little thing gets hot, real hot. So you just put this thing real close and you can shrink film faster. How long do they last? Um, I don't know. You could get a good year out of it with light use, probably six months. Four to six months with like really heavy use. The last one I used honestly lasted I think about a year. They're at least a good six month heat gun depending on how much you abuse it. But I haven't found spending 40, 60, 80 dollars on a on their better models. They fail just as quickly if not faster. So from there, you'd probably have to go like really high up. And I just haven't taken the plunge into, I don't know, there's some people talking about like a $400 Steinel heat gun that I kind of want to pick up. I'll try it out. But we don't need features. So, f depends on what you're doing. So like some people are using these heat guns to like bend plastic tubing for PCs. They're using them to remove stickers, um, crafts projects. So they need them to like sit on desks. That's why it like sits like that, right? It's got these little feet and stuff. And it's got two temperature things and two fan settings. So it just depends on what you're using it for. For window tinting, we just want heat guns to get really hot and blow lots of air. That's all we need them for. So the better they can do that, the better for us. So I just need a heat gun to get hot. They're the workhorse of heat guns, 100%. So they feel like a toy, but they're really, really good heat guns. How long do the felt cards last? They will last infinite amount of time. I think felt cards get better the older that they get. So the edges start to compress down a little bit. They'll look gross. But they... Felt cards don't really wear out. Yeah, chat was bugging me about one that I had for a very, very long time. It's still around here somewhere. But then we got Detroit Tin Studio printed ones, so. <laughs> hey, I like that felt card. The felt card's great. So order the single one? No, I mean, they, they wear out in a month. Get the five pack. <laughs> yeah, you just need one. My Bauer has lasted a couple years. Interesting. That's good to know. I think that was one people were telling me to pick up from Harbor Freight. They said get the Harbor Freight heat gun. So there's like the Warrior heat gun from Harbor Freight, which I don't think is, is, is any better than the Wagner. I think it's a little worse, but it's also not as expensive. It's really cheap. It's like 10 bucks. Who, who's going to complain about that? But there was a Bauer one there too. Really what's gonna happen with some of these tools, like the shank, I, I don't break shanks, I don't know. I've never broken one. Some people snap them. Um, 
you'll just end up sometimes losing them is what will happen you set it down somewhere in a car and then you'll forget and then it'll you'll misplace it or something try edges those can wear out anything that's really scraping into the seals that you need to go across the tent will kind of wear out so like squeegee blades will wear out but I use those triages on the Jetta. Awesome. Nice. Very nice. Don't those make life a little bit easier? It's such a dumb tool that works really well. Like, I, everybody knows me for using the shanks on like everything. I didn't use shanks for a long time. I looked at that and said it was a dumb tool. It's like Rick looked at a keg and said it was stupid. <laughs> but then I, he told me to try one and I'm like, fine, if he likes it, then I'll probably like it. And then sure shit, that little crooked, this, this dumb, what I'm talking about is this, this dumb little crooked butter knife is awesome. It just, that little angle, it stays out of your way. It's slim, so it fits in your tool belt. It's easy to keep with you. It just makes life easier. Before that, I was tucking things with like an easy reach, but the easy reach, so quick example, easy reach doesn't have this little angle here. So this kind of stays out of your way. When you're using, God, I really don't have one with me. So like I was using just a corner tool. So the biggest difference here is see how that kind of pinches against the glass um, and this gets in my way. So while with enough room, you can pull this back and tuck some stuff in. A shank is kind of already angled to stay out of your way. That's why I like these so much. They're stupid, but they're really effective. <laughs> if you need something less expensive than a Wagner, you need some serious adjustments to be made to your business. <sighs> I don't know why. I, like, I think it's just because everybody harps on price for everything. So, I, I don't know. I always make it a point to like bring it up. And I just need to ignore it sometimes. But I agree. <laughs> Ten dollars on a heat gun versus like twenty. If you have to make that decision, like yeah. Tint tools are largely inexpensive. Just get what works. You're not spending, you know, a couple hundred dollars. Plus, I mean, you can spend a lot more on an impact gun. That's a bigger choice that you're gonna wanna last for a long time in support behind that. The tint tools, eh, it's a lot of them that it's fine. Let's get the better ones, they're cheap. A double shrink, everyone please double shrink big window, save so much time. Oh, okay, that's a good point. So, when I shrink any back window or windshield, this is a post that came up. Um, I just touch up my edges. So, I'll leave all the film extra around the border, and then I'll cut it, and then I'll shrink it, and then I'll cut it to size. But what you're doing is cutting along where areas that were held together with your shrink. So there's some areas that are like all held together with material that you just cut off. So then you go to install it and you have fingers and you're wondering what happened. Well, just take the heat gun and trail it closer to all these edges and all these little micro fingers and stuff. You'll just smooth them all out. 
And then when you go to install the film, everything will lay down a little bit better. Always touch up all your edges after you cut them off. It's not hard to do, it's real quick. Let me see how the battery's doing on this thing. Oh, it doesn't tell me. Tell me! There you go, there you go, bro. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. We gotta change up. Let me. So I got a battery sitting on a charger. We had to run with the internal battery on this one because the other one was dead. So, in order to swap out the battery on the GoPro in the medium mod, this is all GoPro stuff here too. This is their head mount and everything. The battery lasts for an hour when it's fully charged. So now I have to unscrew this. Hey, friend. Oh, I remember you. So you gotta unscrew this. Efren with the two. Efren Garcia super chatted one dollar and ninety nine cents. Sensei. Sensei. Praying gesture. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you, man. So you take off the screw. Then you have to take out the GoPro, which you set up at a particular angle so you could do all your video. Then you have to take the legs and you flip those up. And then you have to open the battery door or the media mount door and then open it up. And then you can take out the battery. So that's why I have that big obnoxious battery pack. And then you can take a new battery, slot it in here, and then you have an hour of runtime. So when you do a three hour live stream, yeah, no thanks. Put that back in, flip down the legs. It's, th it's this part here. Then you gotta put it back on the mount. You gotta line up the holes. You gotta screw this dumb little thing back into it. It's just not fast. Oh, it's off center. And it's not like it'll charge while it's on. So I like this camera, but that part about it is really dumb. So when you get the media mod, there's like a flippy, there's like a flippy screen that you can get for it, but your battery life is still only an hour and then you gotta disassemble it just to change out the, ba like you can't use these cameras for very long at all. You'd have a screwdriver for it? Yeah. I have one around here, but I misplace it pretty often. Yeah, you can use a Phillips, but it's, it's still, you have to go through all the things to change it out. It's just a dumb system. I, it's not fast. I wish there was like a quick disconnect or something, but there's not. Huh, that's fun. <laughs> With that key locator on it? Yeah, but I already lost one. I'm sad. Also, why? They don't give you, like they, these little turn screws, you're supposed to get your fingers in there, but you, it's just a, few decisions on this thing. They could have literally mounted this opposite and it would be infinitely better. Is this battery just completely dead? I can use the other one then. I think it's charged enough. But this could be a, this could be a dead battery. I didn't check the status of these ones. Well, the thing is I kind of know where it is, but so I tinted a guy's, <laughs> it's a weird situation. I tinted a guy's car and this guy was probably, I can't even say too much. It was very private, let's just say that. And I'm pretty sure I left a 
the tracker on his keys of all people. And then when I messaged and I was like, hey, did I leave that on your keys? Which I know I did. He said, no, th there wasn't anything. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not gonna drive to the house, right? Like, it's just, it is what it is. But it tells me where it last was, so. What kind of earbud? Uh, these are the Bose Quiet Comfort ones. They, they have the, the wing tips that sit in my ear much better. There's a lot of them that are really uncomfortable. So these are decent battery life. They sound good. The noise canceling is pretty great too. Headphones without, without noise canceling is, uh, is kind of like, I need noise canceling now. It's really comfortable when you're in a noisy shop. You can just turn down a noisy shop, air compressors, all that stuff. It's great. All right, now let's try this, because, all right, we've got enough to finish this. And for the better microphone, so sorry about all this. The Apple ones, they, they don't sit in my ears for very long. Like they fall out, they start to get loose and then they just pop out. So, plus there's no noise canceling on them either. There we go. Yep. Um, recently started using a different film. Have been getting issues with peeling on rear and front windshields at the bottom. Never had issues with the past films I used. That's wonky. Sounds like their glue sucks. What, uh, what film are you using? I would, if I'm having that issue, I'm probably not gonna try to accommodate for the film. I'm gonna find something else. That sounds like a pretty bad issue. I mean, some people will say over shrinking, but you were shrinking stuff fine before. I've had films that just don't stick very well. Okay, so excuse the audio for a second. But everything, everything should be sounding better now. I never get notifications that you're streaming. That's no good. Did you hit the bell? That's the only thing I can say. Other than that, it's out of my hands. Make sure the app notifications are not disabled on your phone. And, and that you hit the bell on the channel. YouTube's trying to suppress my channel, man. <laughs> we should send an angry letter. Oh, I was trying to get my play button yesterday. I have to wait until they manually review my channel. So they get a notification for every channel that gets over 100. And then, so it can take up to 30 days to do that. So I'm hopefully going to get that.
my other account won't let me chat here. Maybe you got blocked. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I buy... I buy off supposed Max Pro dealer. I've heard alcohol helps, but know how to incorporate it into tinting. <sighs> Max Pro. Max Pro is not my first choice. Uh, some people, so alcohol, they'll just put it in their slip solution and they say it's supposed to help with the drying because alcohol mixed into water helps things evaporate faster. Makes sense. So that's basically all you do is add some alcohol to it and cross your fingers that it helps. Your glue or your slip solution is probably going to be lighter than what I'm going to use. What's the vice? Oh, the vice for serpenting squeegees. Um, so go on Amazon and search angle vice, and it's like $45. Um, it's this guy right here. And then I got a couple of these brackets. Just look for vice brackets. Like literally just search that, you'll find them. I gotta finish this windshield first, so I gotta I gotta get on that stuff. But if I was using a film <laughs> Wait, does somebody else have that problem with Max Pro 2? I mean, that, like, look, that's, that's honestly would be my first. I would look it up a little bit, and then it's a big red flag. If you're using film and things are going okay, and then you switch to another film, and then you're having, like, peeling issues on the back windows and windshields, <laughs> it's just a long-term red flag for me on that. On doors, <sighs> not so much. Like, you could just adjust your shrinking a little bit or something, maybe, and give that a try. But any types of those, ty like, films should just install and be okay. use Helios now, you'll be good with Helios. All right, we're getting to the fun part. So, squeegee, some stuff. Remember, everything's all covered. I was using Geo for a while too, I loved it. Why just stop? See, films are like, you can start looking at other attractive brands. Um, it, like, film in my opinion, if you're pretty comfortable with just what you're installing. You think it works well. They have a good selection of upsells. So like a good carbon ceramic and dyed lineup. Then I don't really see a reason for anybody to switch. It's just cause you're, I guess, bored with the film that you're using. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. I like the color of Helios, slightly different. I can appreciate that, for sure. Um, anyone, or anyone have any tips for BMW 3 Series front windshield? Problems with tight gaskets. 
Tight gaskets, the best thing I can tell you is a shank or take apart the doors. I use a shank for everything. It helps with tucking it. And then cut your patterns a little bit tighter. There's a lot tighter BMWs out there than the 3 Series. I remember I used to, I used to be like that, though. Just get better with practice. I used to tell <laughs> customers. I think at one point I actually said to a BMW customers, BMW customers can be more picky, so I just need more time with your vehicle. I don't think he was very happy about that. <laughs> Do you worry about Worry about tint on the windshield in the wintertime freezing and peeling off. I'm a person who don't understand why it did that. I don't. For whatever reason, window tint is fine, even in freezing temperatures. It'll just take longer for the film to dry, but it can still dry like in a week, sometimes a little bit longer. Like, you can have a stubborn water pocket or something. But film still finds a way to dry out, even in freezing cold temperatures, and it doesn't screw up the glue. So I would blame it on the film, not the winter. Film School Online just dropped two new films. Oh, interesting. Another one. <laughs> uh, it, gets, it gets hard to keep up with. I get asked all the time about lots of different brands. The thing is, here's some of the mystery just gone. There's only so many window film manufacturing plants. And there's only so many technologies. So by and large, a lot of films are going to be real similar. Um, where they vary is in appearance. So like companies can basically either get one film and rebox it, or they can approach a manufacturer and get their own SKU made and then be a little bit more unique. Or if they're big, big, they are the manufacturer manufacturing their film. But if you are a window film manufacturer, you are trying to use your plant as much as you can, so you're going to manufacture film for a lot of people and let them worry about selling it to consumers. So whenever you see another film brand pop up, most of the time it's an existing thing. Didn't I? Did I get it? No, I didn't. Ooh, <laughs> there it is. So what I don't like is I get five million questions about this film, that film. I don't know. I've only, I only know what I use and what I have used. So if you want to know more about particular films, ask in the Facebook group. It's usually a better place, because then you get lots of people chiming in about it, rather than just one opinion. I've been using Geo. I'm very happy with Geo. <laughs> Was that a TikTok film? So, yeah, there's some memes going around. I mean, I should just shut up and say, yes, ceramic is, has an easier time, you have an easier time looking through ceramic than any other film. <laughs> In reality, that's not the case. 
but a lot of people have never had tint and don't have anything to compare it to, so then you buy ceramic and you're more than happy with it, and then you think that it, that's real. <laughs> it is it is unfortunately false advertising, but it's pretty great because so many people are now asking about it, so I've had a bunch of calls with people specifically asking about ceramic lately, and I just... I'm like, did you see the videos? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> All right. I like that people that have never thought about getting window tint are then interested in getting window tint. That's what I think is so cool. That's one reason I do some of the silly videos that I do is just to try and it's an outreach thing. It's to show that it exists. It's to show there's a little bit more complexity behind it. It's to show that not everything is all the same. So it's not just, you know, oh, this one guy does it for 100, this other guy's doing it for 400, he must be ripping people off. Oh, well, that's not true. See these corners. I'll get to that one. Super. Nick Doolan super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. Good morning, Tint God. Nick Doolan, thank you. How you doing, man? Good to have you. Thank you so much for the five. I really appreciate that. Okay, so part with the soak ropes, soak shields, and the towels. If everything's all bunched up, you'll have a harder time getting everything all tucked in, obviously. So that's where I have the biggest headache with this kind of stuff. But I kind of saw it coming. Just want to get all that down. Sneak it in. It's hard to, like, it needs to almost be pulled in. So to, like, hook that end and then, like, pull it in. But then you're trying to sneak the tool past everything, and that's a little tricky. But let's make sure all our edges are covered so we don't have that problem we had the other day. <laughs> Congrats. I'm officially the tenor at the audio shop. I have to fix about four cars. <laughs> Yay. Congrats. And whatever else comes back that whatever that guy did screwed up. <laughs> oh, boy. They always have a history. Okay. Um, so there's a guy that asked earlier on in the stream, uh, have I ever gotten streaky smears in a windshield? Yes, I have. Um, the reason that happens is because the film will dry as you're squeezing it out. Um, but really from these air pockets here. So you see how this is all kind of bunched up together? I'm gonna wanna sweep all these air pockets out as if it were a big ripple along the windshield. What I don't wanna do is go all the way across and then get those air pockets to then come back down along where I just squeegeed. Because depending on how much soap you use and the temperature, you'll then have uh, streaky spots. So see this little finger right here? It's got a little bit of water here, but if I just now take it and try and shove it down over this dry spot or the area that's more dry that I just squeegeed out, that's more likely to happen. So you just need to keep everything even because they'll start chasing back into those areas.
So if your glass is cooler, you have some soap in your bottle. It's not as much of a concern, but if you start hearing your film being a little tacky, which is gonna happen a lot more in the summertime, things are hotter, they dry out faster. So you have a very limited amount of time to try and get this all squeegeed out. So the more that I sit here and talk to you guys, the drier this starts to get. So like this big old pocket here, I kind of want to smooth everything out See, now I don't have this big air pocket in one spot. It's all kind of even. And then you just sweep it all out. But I'm going like this way, this way, this way, this way. I'm not just going straight. On a back window, it's a little bit easier because you have defroster lines letting a lot of that air get out of the window, windshield, rear windshield. So then we go to the other side. Keep squeegeeing. But so for this thing, rather than just pushing it right this way, I just, I either wanna try and even it out a little bit more. That way I don't have that big air pocket just bunching up on itself. Or I'm just gonna try and smooth it all out together. I just don't want air chasing back into where I just squeegeed. That's the, that's the long story short there. So, in traditional RAM fashion, they like to have this urethane be all squiggly along the sides. So we might have to trim a little bit. I'd rather have to do that though than have a gap, so. Let's give it one more shot. Still fought. Sometimes that's how it is. Sometimes you'll never be happy with your own results on a particular car. Just do the best you can and and try and move on to the next one. Um, it's a learning process. And everybody's different. Some people won't take a second look. Definitely don't kill yourself over it. <laughs> like. Fast Money 99 super chatted $5. Can you talk <laughs> about the streaks I was mentioning earlier, like the air pockets that may be causing it? Thank you. Thank you for the five. Um, that was literally the last 10 minutes was all talking about that. Yep. So rewind it just a little bit, and I specifically said there was somebody that was asking about those, so this whole, while we were squeezing out the windshield was your question. <laughs> so, Mr. Fast Money, thank you for the five. Yes, we just talked about it. Good thing that these things are recorded, so. Like I said earlier, long story short is really the air pockets um, need to be all squeegeed out as if you were basically like, this is a pool of water, boop, and then everything ripples out. Do that from the center and just try and keep everything even. Don't let air feed back into itself, but there's a lot of, you'll see in the demo. So now we gotta check it. Everything's on there, squeegeed down. Hopefully this turned out nice. That's always the part about windshields. 
that you cross your fingers? What year for the BCMs? Um, I think it was like 19, 18 or 19, there was the model change. Really easy to poke your head under the dash and, and see. But 19 and up, they're still doing it. When they change the body style, it's exactly right. Yep. They, I don't know, I don't know why they did it, but that's just what we gotta deal with. This is one. <laughs> Most vehicles, there really aren't water issues as long as you're not sitting there with a fire hose on your tent, <laughs> like sitting here spraying it, like you can use a decent amount of water, but you know, I take an extra little measure. I cover everything up, towels, door panels. And a big reason the door panels are now covered was because that was always a question I would get. And it, it doesn't look good. You don't want to see that like customers don't like to see a bunch of water running down their interior because it's always like a big red flag. <laughs> like it, it looks scary. For the most part, you're okay, but that doesn't give you free reign to, to s just saturate everything. So if you're gonna spray a bunch of water, keep wiping things down as you go. my keg. Aren't they great? Did you get a brass sprayer? That's always a big debate too. When I first looked at the brass sprayers, I was a little concerned. But then when I actually got one, there's a lot of water weight off the hose so it's really balanced and it's compact and it just they last forever as long as you don't just ch even if you chuck them on the ground some <laughs> they're pretty pretty damn indestructible brass sprayer is a little out of my budget at the moment oh it's no good so Definitely keep it in mind. Be extra careful with your plastic sprayer. The part about this, the plastic sprayer that drove me crazy is that they've got two points that they can fail. And I would often, like I only had the one sprayer. So when that sprayer went, then I'm using a different thing entirely. And you can't just go to a hardware store and get a new one. So at least keep an extra tip around. Because if it falls on the ground, it can snap off. And sometimes with just a lot of spraying, like you just use it frequently, um, the pin, it like, it's got a plastic mechanism that pulls up on a pin and then that will, uh, will get bent over time. It'll just wear out. At least that was, hopefully they've made them better since then. So that's why I like the brass ones so much better. They just work, they just work nicer. Okay, we got one little guy right there. Just like on the other side. Thoughts on this year's market? Um, it's early. 
I don't think it's slow. I think winter time can be hit or miss. Honestly, most of October, November were, were pretty great. Um, it's been a little bit slower lately, but it's still early. It's February. Once you get into later February, March, April, that's when things will really start to pick up. I mean, when the pandemic first hit and shut everything down, I didn't know what we'd open back up into. And then everybody was like incredibly busy. I mean, what I, one thing I thought is like, okay, not as many cars are being sold, so there's not going to be as many tint jobs, but there's been more people flipping their cars lately too. So that so people that I've tinted for six months later, they're like, yeah, I sold that one, and then I bought this one, and I made money. <laughs> so it's like, oh, that's awesome. So then it's created just different work for me. It's kind of like when factory tint came out. Um, I hadn't tinted when that was first a thing, but there were so many people that are like, oh, they're putting factory privacy glass on the rear of trucks and SUVs now, that's gonna kill our business. Well, what happened is, yeah, it did kill a, a fair amount of rear trucks and SUVs, but what it also did was introduced a lot more people into getting front doors to match the back. <laughs> that wouldn't have done it. So, I and, People still seem like they're running really healthy businesses. So every one of these big things that happens always creates some type of uncertainty. But then something else will happen that all of a sudden like fixes it all or changes it in a way that you didn't think of. So I don't know really what's going to happen, but I'm still pretty confident in... Like, window tint, more people are doing windshields now than I did five years ago. And it didn't get any more legal. <laughs> just more people started doing it. So it just, it always seems to be doing a really positive thing. And then, like, all these weird trends then come out, right? Like... Oh, this dude's going to be on YouTube, and he's going to teach everybody how to do it. And then they're going to do it themselves. <laughs> well, <laughs> then you have a TikTok trend where people say ceramic then darkens the outside but not the inside, and then it's super clear to see through. And it's like, and you got a bunch of other business. Like, it's just, it's, I don't know, all this stuff is weird. Yay! That corner I was a little nervous on, but we got it. We got it. Tinted windshields in a lot of states. There's always legal questions there. Um, Michigan's one of those states where we legally can have it with a doctor's note. So I just assume everybody's got a doctor's note. They don't require me to look at it. Do you only do ceramic windshields? No, this is this is not a ceramic windshield. Glare, vehicle look, and uh, and privacy. Those are three big reasons to do a windshield. Extra UV protection. So we're doing 50, 
50 is one of those interesting shades where it's light, but when you put it on a windshield, it doesn't seem quite so light anymore. It's like dark enough, and on a cloudy day, you get lots of reflections from the sky. So if you want like a more private look on your windshield, but you don't want to go black out, then 50 is a really, really good shade choice. This looks good. Making sure all these edges are touched up. <laughs> nice. 50 on the windshield, 5 on the sides. Very nice. Um, is there a big difference between 50 and 40? On the windshield, yeah, there'd be a good there'd be a good difference. I wish I had like a 40 42 somewhere in there. Um, but they don't have it in that. It goes, the GeoShield films go from 50 to 35, so it goes from like a nice medium smoke look on the windshield to like super light if you want to go with uh, ceramic and 35 if you want to go darker. So it covers most of the bases. Wish they had something that was a little bit more in between. Um, just to give one more option, but it also makes it a little bit more confusing then. People that get 50 are usually really happy with the 50. People that get 35, they generally are just going for like a nice dark look on their windshield, so it's been good. Okay, so now that we have tinted the whole windshield and pulled out the rope, we still have the towels down there, but the real question, is did we break the truck? I mean, nothing has been going off right now, so that's a, that's a real good sign that everything's okay. But we're gonna start it just to make sure everything's cool. Yeah, 40 is really close. That's why I want like a little bit lighter than that. Do you plug in a battery charger? No, we just did the front doors. All right. Let's go. Three, two, one. <gasps> it works. No check engine lights. Screen works. No water. <laughs> it was real unfortunate. He said he brought his truck or uh, another car somewhere else. The personal reasons. Um, and then they ruined his vehicle. <laughs> so he brought this one here. Which for this one, definitely glad because of that BCM problem. Everything works, everything looks good. Um, gonna make sure these bottoms are swept out one more time. And, uh, and that's all we're doing today. Front doors and full windshield. Twenty percent. Uh, I'm considering twenty percent all the way around with forty on the windshield. Consider how it'll look. You, you'll be really happy with it. I think it's a great look. My most popular um, is honestly 20, 20 on the sides, and then forty or fifty on the windshield. So it's a nice, it's a nice complement to it. It's when you want to like a darken up your windshield, but you don't want to go like full blackout. 40 will, 40 will be a little bit darker than this. Um, 20 is good because it'll match like the side doors. So this is, when you do, oh, I got to roll that window up. 20 gives you more of a silhouette look. 35%, you can see colors and the seating a little bit better and stuff. So you still have a tinted look, but it's not like I'm trying to hide a bunch of stuff. So I like it. I like when you do 35, especially with the full windshield. 
He's he's waiting. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cash him out real quick, and I'll I'll be on here for a little bit longer. RGC Super Chatted $4.99. What out there now? Looks good. DW Tinting Super Shattered $5, Fog the Customer.
Yeah, it's just cashed him out. It's quick. <laughs> Free tent. I heard you guys trying to set off the fog machines. I forgot to plug them in, but yeah, I'm glad I, I didn't. No, I didn't realize I was tying him up extra. So he said, he like, all right, I'll wait up front and feel free to stream it. And I was like, cool. But that always takes a little extra time. So what, it was a 10 o'clock appointment, 11, 12, 12.30. I guess he was running late to an appointment now. So all the checkout stuff happened rather quick, um, but it's pretty straightforward. He was listening the whole time? Yeah, yeah, he was sitting up front. So he's, he's uh, seen some of the channel. So what's cool is he brought me a Cadillac CT6 or something. Um, and we tinted that one a while ago. And then he had another vehicle tinted. He said he brought it to somebody else because, like, family, family, like, there's a kind of like a family shop that also did window tinting or something like that. And so they were like, why didn't you bring it to this one? So then he brought his other car. And whoever tinted it completely destroyed his car. He said he basically, like, water was literally inside the screen. On, it was a Genesis. So water was literally inside the screen. He had, like, rear shades. One of them was busted. Um, the heads-up display was soaked. Just everything was soaked. So uh, that's no good. So then he brought this truck here, and I'm glad he did because that BCM, that's a problem. I want to hook up a hose really quick. Can I do that? I want to do, there is a couple little shop things real quick. Let me do that before this, before this dies on me. Everything seems to be working. But yeah, so somebody asked what I use for payment processing. I use this little guy right here. This is Zettle. Um, it's through PayPal, but it is actually like a more, more, it's more similar to like Clover and Square. It's just PayPal's version of it. Um, 2.1, 2.2, something like real low rates um, for processing. So that's been cool. Um, and uh, accounts are, money's deposited like next, within like the next day. Like usually I'll wake up and there'd be a notification for the depositor late at night. So things are pretty quick. I was using PayPal here but I wanted something that would actually go to bank account and not just PayPal. So I got this thing. Um, this is a hundred foot hose. That's a 50 foot one. So I got a hundred foot so I could actually reach around the shop. I cheaped out and got the 50. And then I didn't think I'd use it hardly at all. And then I use it literally like all the time. So have you ever run into somebody that doesn't want to pay? No, everybody's paid. If I ever had somebody not pay, I'd just probably pull the film off and then send them on their way. <laughs> like, I don't know. I wouldn't let them drive away with a car like that. There are some people that'll try and write you a check. That's always a red flag. Don't accept personal checks. Let's drain this thing out. Square, Clover, yeah, they're all good. As far as I know, lots of people use them. They all process payments, they give you your money, and they do what they're supposed to. I have no reason to have a big credit card terminal where they charge you for the terminals and monthly fees and like all this other BS that they used to do. All right, so now we'll be able to reach around the entire shop. This is awesome. These are great though. These are one of those, uh, expandy hoses, so they don't take up a lot of space. And they're real flexible. Um, I got one from Costco. 
but they, they get super rigid. So this one actually stays really, really flexible under whatever PSI this is. So being that it's 100 foot, I should finally be able to actually walk around the truck, right? Why does this not seem like 100 feet? <laughs> Oh, that was loud. Connect them together. <laughs> I was gonna do that. Oh, there it goes. I was gonna hook them together, but I just kind of wanted to, it was like 40. It looks like the 50, I know, but now look, it's growing. Holy shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so now does it seem like the 50 foot? Cause I'd reach there and I'd max out on the 50 foot. That's what I'm saying, like these, these ones are ridiculous. God. What the fuck? I should have got the 75. So I was considering just leaving this over here. Everybody's like, what the hell? I guess I could have, because for classes, I wanted to make sure I had one that would reach over there and outside. So I'm like, yeah, I think probably 100 foot would work. I think I should have got the 75. God damn. Yeah, we'll go there and back again. How about that? We'll leave most of this probably wrapped up back here. This is the X-Hose Pro. I like these because they, uh... oh shit. There we go, maybe that. I like to just leave this thing hanging here. So it's got a shot off. It's got this little shot off right at the end, which is handy, but. I'll just leave it hanging there. I guess I'll have to... I guess I'll have to put... Yeah, I'll get a hose reel or something over here. I'm just gonna leave this just bound up over here. <laughs> But compared to a regular garden hose, this is way easier to just coil up and leave sitting in a place. I think I spent like 50 on the 40 or the 50 foot one. It was like 50 bucks. Um, and then I was looking to get the 100 foot one and it was like 75. But then I came across an Amazon post and it was like 40 bucks for the 100 foot one. So I just got 100 foot again. Do you do one car a day and then chill or try and hustle more cars? Lately I've been doing one car a day and kind of chill, but there's usually a bunch of other stuff to do. So I have the online store and then just try and do stuff with the business to like grow it and then other things as well. So there's always other stuff that's kind of going on. It's not necessarily just like free time all day. But things slowed down some in the winter, for sure. So I've been spacing them out to one a day. I was doing, trying to maintain two appointments with the stream. I got a big tent depot order I gotta get together. <laughs> so really, I just wanted enough 
to basically come over here. So I'll pull some off here, and then I'll be able to hit both sides of the car. That way I don't have to do it anywhere else. But that was magical. It looked like a 50 foot hose and then it just kept growing. Wash some of the salt down. Some of that crap, just let it rinse underneath. Yay, that's easy now. So whenever I wash out my keg, I just use this thing. But I'll get a reel for it. We'll set it up. Just not something I thought of today. Cool, I like it. The floor, this is a race deck floor. You can find it at racedeck.com. There's interchangeable, or yeah, they're interchangeable, but they're interlocking um, squares. These are like one foot by one foot. This is an example right here. So they all kind of like clip together. They're uh, stiff, harder plastic. They're this thick. Um, Swiss Tracks is another really good one too. This is, I think, a little bit more budget, budget friendly for a big space. There's still like four, four or four fifty a square. Um, so like, gets expensive, but it looks really cool. I'm a fan. Where does the water go? Into the sky, it evaporates. So it'll sit there, and if you have drains, obviously it would drain, but this is, this is especially helpful when you don't have floor drains. Um, you're not using a ton of water when you're tinning, so it's usually pretty good for tinning a handful of cars, and then it sits overnight, evaporates, and then tin again the next day. It's when you're washing cars, doing a lot of stuff, that that water's pretty much gonna spill over to wherever the low spots of your floor is. They're, they're made for show cars, um, like cool displays, home garages, so like people will drive their cars into their personal garage and then not do much, like rainwater will rest on the floor or snow and stuff like that. Um, they're definitely also for shops, but you know, if you're a full on detail shop, yeah, you, you can't squeegee the floor. You have to rip it all. You have to remove it and then clean underneath it and then put it back. If I was going to do that on cars, would doing it off the floor then squeegee the water out so you don't have so much water underneath? Yeah, you could move it, but it'd get really annoying to do it. So they all break apart pretty easily, but it is a little bit of a project. So um, I have a live stream where I literally ripped up the other one, cleaned underneath it, and then we made it bigger. Um, but if I were to do it, you obviously need some square footage to like move all this stuff to, um, or just stack it on itself. It'll be kind of gross, and then you can clean underneath it and sweep it out. But it hasn't smelled like it's not. It, it looks gross, but it all kind of dries out, and just you don't see it. So you're walking over it, and then every like, I don't know. I'd say like nine months to like a year, you'll probably want to clean it out. Wet floors keep the dust down. Yeah, it does. It helps. Dust will stick to it. What was the other thing? There was another thing that I brought in. Oh, I think it's out in the car. I got that lockout kit that I wanted to look at, too. Let me take a trip outside.
the fuck is this man? I woke up here. here. I got a If you're doing like another garage here, part of your shit sucks. I'm going to be a grumpy. I don't know. Okay, sorry, mic range. Yeah, concrete walls. Um, I don't know what that is. Like I know what it is, but uh, they just parked in my spots. It's kind of annoying. So I tried calling them earlier. I'm gonna try calling them again. So I don't know. Somebody in chat told me to buy this one. This is a lockout kit, and I didn't realize the box was gonna be so big. <laughs> But now I can see why it was like $70. Well, they just staple the hell out of it, that's for sure. Big old box staples. It glows in the dark. I didn't know that. See, I've said, when I sometimes overspend on some stuff by a little bit, Sometimes there's some happy things that come along with it that I just didn't think about. So like, you got this wedge. Some have flashlights on the end. Yeah, I guess that's a good length. In the box it seems like it's, yep, I guess you need that. Look at that. I could touch the other side of the shop with this thing. I wonder if I could break into my own car. We should try that sometime. For nighttime? Yeah, that's handy. I can see that. I gotta see how to do this. So I'm guessing these are important. Try it. Oh God, I don't know what I'm getting into. Cannon. Ugh. Well, now you have to try it. Maybe. Hang on. Can we watch a video first? Because I get it. I kind of get it. You like wedge it and then you go through the passenger side, though. Why? Just in case I completely mar up all the paint and it's on the passenger side. Um, what is this big easy? Big easy low kit. No videos, just send it. Okay. I'm going to take advantage of some of the videos. My headset is probably going to die. I don't think I don't think I have enough battery to do this. Yeah, I really don't think I get enough battery to do this today. Probably have to do this another day. Look at this dude. This is a truck dude. Can you guys hear that? No, you can't? Okay, that's fine. I can. I don't know why it's not routing. <laughs> I 
literally bending the do I I know you got to wedge it and then you like what take the air thing And then you just grind it against the paint Yeah, I don't know if I want to do this right now. It's just that easy. <laughs> I can hear it. I don't know why why you guys can't, but I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out another time. So, like, I get how it works. Ugh, this is a terrible video. This guy's, like, cramming the... L Look at this guy. He's got it. So he's just taking the wedge and sliding it in there. I like that way better rather than taking the other thing and trying to hammer it. That's, I feel better about that one. Then you get a gap. Oh, what the fuck is that? I got that piece. <gasps> oh, it's a protector. Oh, this dude is doing it right. I feel way better. The other guy just slammed it against the paint. And he's still having some problems, though. See, I'm so glad that I got this one then. And then film it from the other side. And then he gets the door. Now that the door handle is pulled back firmly, we need to deflate the airbag cap carefully. Oh, so it's not pressing too hard against it. That makes sense. That's a good tip. So then it's like you're... Oh, okay. All right. See, these are good things to know. My camera's dead, by the way. <laughs> It'll hit you in the face. <laughs> I would totally do that, and then I'd have a fat lip for a while. Yeah, my camera's dead. I didn't charge any batteries. Like, listen to the audio at the beginning of this. It was horrible. I forgot. We'll try this another time. I've done it. So I was, uh, I was in the back seat of a Fusion putting the headrest back in, and then they're, they're like, it was the easy Fusions, but those seats are like spring-loaded, so when you pull up, like my brother, he unlatched it, I told him to, and I was gonna put the headrest back in, and it just slammed me in the mouth. I had a fat lip for like a week. No fun. So, yeah, everything, like, this has a little bit of battery on it, but it's not much. These always take, like, an hour to charge. I want a brother. <laughs> Aww. The Porter Cable heat gun's available? Is it really? I kind of want to pick one up. before they go extinct, so then I can do a direct comparison. Steamer. Um, They do have it through a third-party seller. Interesting. That's cool. Because, yeah, you can't find these in stores anymore. Or I don't even think on Amazon. Hang on. 
I didn't get a scanner yet. That was the overwhelming. There were too many things. Like the lockout kit was pretty, like just get this one, okay. And the scanner thing was like 500 things and technical stuff and no, I didn't end up getting one yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. I just don't want to, I log, no, log out. Sign out. Okay, cool. I just don't want to be logged in. Desktop, there we go. Um, whoa, wait, what? It's back? Oh, shit. It's 40 bucks. It's back. This wasn't on here for a long time. What happened? Now they have it? Deliver Saturday. All right, hang on. I'm getting this. I'm buying it before any of you guys. I got to log back in. Yes. Buy now, pay with. Um, that one, business card. Place your order. It's back everywhere now? What the heck? What happened? Well, cool. I thought Craftsman took it over or something. All right, I got it. <laughs> oh, no, not that one. Okay, so I want to do a direct comparison between the Porter Cable and the Wagner. That's probably the biggest comparison. No, the not the... The Wagner, that one and the Craftsman one, because they swear they're not the same thing, but we'll find out for sure. Porter Gable was like my favorite. It's a little bit more expensive, so they were like 35, now they're 42, um, which is still fine, because it's a little bit more for a pretty decent gun. Um, I want to see, I want to I wanna do a direct comparison between the two. What's your SOC number? with the back screen. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not a little far away. But thank you for telling me about Walmart. I just had to check Amazon really quick because it wasn't like, it wasn't around. Immersive sound, Echo Buds. I already have a pair of Echo Buds, the older ones. Now they're newer. There's so many of these to pick from now. Um, oh, somebody asked. I have these ones. They're cheaper now. I have these ones. These are cheaper than, uh, than when I first bought them. So they're 280. That's what I paid for them. But you can find them around Christmas time. They were all marked down to 200. I was really sad. It's like, damn, I overpaid on mine. I used to have the Bose QC30s, but they discontinued these. No, it wasn't the QC30s. 35s? Oh, that's why you can't find them. They were kind of like this. They were the neckband style ones, which went out of style a while ago. Now everything's truly wireless and easier to lose. Which, that makes sense, right? But they were amazing. They were great to work with. You get 10 hour battery life. You could switch from one device to another. Um, actually, you could connect them both devices at the same time. 
So I was connected to my computer and I could be connected my, to my phone and then, so I can do the live stream stuff and then just pick up a phone call. But they'd only last about a year and a half before I'd, they'd get destroyed. Cheaper on Amazon than Walmart anyways. Maybe they're just drop shipping from Walmart. <laughs> or they're Walmart drop shipping from Amazon. Oh, I forgot those tools. I bought another squeegee thing that seemed interesting. I don't know how to find it on here, though. I'll have to bring it in. That's the other thing that I was going to do, but I totally forgot. I had to bring in a few things. I had to bring in another banner that the extra long, ridiculous hose. And uh, I think that's it. But is this not charging? Why is this flashing? That's no good. Fun. My, uh, my charger's not working. That's a good thing to figure out now, though. Too many wires. <sighs> I might have to get that. Okay, well, it's working for that, so that's good. How long are the triages going to be in stock for? Um, they're going to be in stock for a while. Uh, it's probably going to be an ongoing thing. I have... Um, I have 5,000 of them, so I have a whole bunch of them still. <laughs> the scanner. I don't know if I feel like looking into a scanner right now. Um, They'll be in stock next month. I, I have no concerns about that one. Glass Aid looks like it'll stay in stock too. So I've got a whole bunch of it. Oh, I got to bring another box home. Yeah, I got to get I gotta get a big Tint Depot order together. Received my autograph triage the other day. Thanks. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah, if you ordered a triage um, and you wanted a signed one and you don't get a signed one, then just respond, just do a reply to the order email and then I'll send out a free one. Getting glass aid tape too and I need the clay bar. I'm getting glass aid tape too and I need that clay bar. Oh, cool. You'll like it. Um, when, why do you need a scanner? The scanner, Oh, just for a couple little things. It's a helpful thing to have. Um, so there was the there was an Audi that we did, and then he drove it away, and the check engine light was on, and then he had a scanner, um, and he said it was just a voltage thing, so the battery died while we were tinting it, um, and that can happen. Uh, if you don't keep a battery charger on it. It's usually in the winter time and it's on any more used cars or cars that generally sit a lot. That's where you that's where you'll see that. Most cars are totally fine. But through a code, so just to check it and clear it so that there's no like, oh my god, we sprayed water on it, something shorted type of reaction. Um, that's what it's helpful to have. When is your next class? The next class is going to be uh, next month, actually. Like this time next month. So, mytintstuff.com. Um, mytintstuff.com, go to Tint School, and then you will find out all about the classes. So March 21st uh, to the 23rd, 18th to the 20th, and May 16th to the 18th. Um, that's gonna come with a couple of things. So. I have an online platform too, tintschool.com. 
um, or Tint Studio School, excuse me, uh, dot com. That is going to be kind of like a prep for the class. Um, so Zoom discussions, uh, private videos, that type of stuff. And then we've got uh, tools. Um, so you're going to be outfitted with a whole bunch of tools, including a keg. So they're going to be pretty sweet. Should be fun. Should be a good time. In that link, guy compares 20. Uh, it doesn't let you, unfortunately, it doesn't let you post links. Um, but if you tell me the name of the video, I can check it out. But 20, 100, and 500 dollars scanners, that's a really helpful video for sure. Actually, I might have found it. <laughs> this one? Oh, I saw this guy before. He did a window tint video. Yeah, I'll have to check something like this out. Yeah, I just need to... Um, yeah, both of these... Both of these will actually be really helpful. Because I just need to know if I can clear stuff, and it, it'll get me basic codes and what vehicles it'll support. Because there's obviously a lot that you could dive into with any of that, and it's just like, on a, it's more for probably the more expensive cars. If it threw a voltage error, um, you want to be able to correct that quick. If you shorted something, you want to be able to know that systems are freaking out, like, Buddy DIY channel. Okay, that was the other one that popped up. So this one. Sweet. Dang. People got so many more subscribers. What is this channel? Are custom floor mats worth it? The coolest BMW engine Christmas gift. Wow, he is like hit or miss on some of these things. Made money flipping cars. How to flip cars, full process, 1.6 million. Damn, some of these are like crazy. That's cool. Yeah, I'll check it out. Well, we'll do this. I'll do this at home. Is that all for today? Uh, we got another car tomorrow. Um, I think it's a full... Yeah, it's a BMW Grand Coupe. So I think we're doing the full thing with the windshield. With the windshield or without, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm going to try flipping cars soon. Hopefully I make good money. That's what we all hope. Good luck, man. Selling cars. I mean, now I think it, it probably would be easier. Good God. I tried selling an old Civic in the summertime, and I just, I hated it. Oh, my God. Dealing with people. Yeah, it's going to be 10 a.m., so probably live by, like, 1030. Dealing with people, though, that are at least, you know, so I posted on Marketplace, which is just terrible. Trying to, trying to just deal with people directly, oh my god, it's so annoying. I'm trying to get them from auction and sell it for a little more. Nice, very nice. The headache is just the number of people that would inquire about it and then would go, okay, what is your best price? And then, like, that is the price. Or then you overlist it and then you mark it down to what you wanted to sell it for. And then they're still like, okay, but what's your best price? <laughs> or somebody that comes to see it and you have it listed for like, I don't know. I had it listed for like three grand at the time. And he's like, okay, I'll give you 500 for it. I'm like, no. Oh, come on. It's worth 500. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. It was a 06 Civic with 80,000 miles on it. That's worth a little bit more than uh, 500 bucks. Thanks. So, I just wanted it out of my life, though. I ended up getting three for it.
I have a 13 Mini Cooper next Saturday. Is it straightforward? Um, most Mini Coopers are pretty straightforward, yeah. Yeah, you have easy windows on that. The front doors are typically... Um, it, it depends on what it is, though, but if it's, like, the, the regular Mini, um, you'll have frameless front doors and then really easy back window and quarter windows. So those are, re those are really simple. There's some people like that on Facebook markets, and there's some that actually give you the right amount. Yeah. Yeah, and you, this is the same. This is the same thing with just running a tent business. Um, a lot of the time, you'll find yourself talking to people that'll just ask you a hundred questions, or will try and beat you up about price, or just seem to want to waste your time for whatever reason. And then they actually don't go through with it. And then most of my clients um, that actually just go through with everything, they're just real straightforward. Hey, I want to get tint. Okay, cool. I'm good with scheduling that day. They come in. We talk for five minutes. They drop off the car, and then I do it. Like, it's real easy. And then the people that want to waste your time, they just waste your time. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. But you kind of know, like, there's people that are very urgent. Like, I get cash in hand, wanting to buy it. I'll come pick it up in an hour. Cool. Done. Uh, off subject, prior to removal, do you let the inside build up with steam or just drive, dive right into removing it? Got a 08 Fusion removal and retent. Um, I'll let the steam sit on the back window for a little bit. So the doors... I don't always use steam for. I'll kind of see what it's like with a heat gun. So you can actually be working on the doors while the steam is kind of working on the back. But if it looks like the fronts are really going to be a pain, then sitting there with the steam can be worth it. Um, but I'll usually let the steam sit on the back window for like 10 minutes before I get started with it. You'll know pretty quickly if it's, if it's going to be a pain or not. A lot of those on Facebook market. Yeah, I don't advertise my business on there for those reasons. But for selling, like, just dumb local stuff, that's where I would, like, you know, cameras, um, cameras or the car or something like that. It wasn't, I, I didn't really know where else to, to list them. I think you get that in a lot of local marketplaces, like classified ads and stuff. People are just looking for a deal, but then... A deal on top with just making your life hell is, was where I had a big problem with it. It's been on for 14 years. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's no fun. Some remove easily, even if they've been on for a long time. But if it's just flaky shit, you might have to just scrape the whole back window. It just might be one of those things. That's what I would say ahead of time. Like, you never know until you get started, but knowing that it's been on that long, I usually don't know how long the tin's been on a car. Somebody buys a car secondhand and is just like, I don't know, I had tin on it. I don't know anything about it. So I don't know anything about it. But if it's really bubbly, thin, flaky shit, then sometimes a lot of steam isn't even going to fix it, and you have to just, like, warm it up and scrape it off. So... On that, I would definitely let them know that there's potential to lose your defrosters. But it's on a Fusion, so it's pretty easy to get to that back window. Third brake light pops out if it needs to. I'm also trying to become a dealer rep. I have to pay a monthly fee, and I could use a dealer license to go to the auctions. Interesting. Yeah, I've never been to a vehicle auction. Sounds interesting, though. I got an 04 F-150 this Sunday at 1 p.m., just the front windows and a strip. Do those 04 F-150s have the mirrors that break off? Um, some of them, Dale. There's two styles, and... See if we can find it. 
So there's two main types here. Ha, they don't do this. Most of them don't, don't do this. So these are the new, new ones. They'll actually put a screw in them, thankfully. Um, the older styles, though, that looks weird a little bit. Okay, so this is the, wow, of course, this literally the smallest picture. So like this type of Ford mirror, the one with like an all enclosed housing here, there's a clip underneath it. Um, those are not easy to remove at all. So just leave those alone. The other style um, is a more rounded clip. Oh, I don't. Google Google's kind of hit or miss on some of these things. Ford mirrors are a little bit more popular, but um, this one. Okay, this one right here. This is what I'm looking for. I wish I could see a picture of it more clipped on the mirror, but you see how there's a split here? There is this bracket here that kind of wraps around, and then it's more rounded at the top and the bottom. All you have to do is sneak a little flathead screwdriver and just pry it down a little against the tab. Don't put pressure on the glass, but literally just pry it down a little bit, and then it'll wiggle itself straight up. Really easy to pull these ones. Ignore the other ones. Probably just do a line in the middle. <laughs> if it's this one, they're real easy to come off. The other one, just don't touch them. You'll, you'll know the difference when you see it in person, though. Yeah, I just try and search what I'm looking for, but it's hit or miss. Like, Google seems to be terrible uh, with, like, when I'm trying to look at a back window um, or any type of glass pictures, it's hit or miss. It's, sometimes you can find one. Like, Fusion back windshield, like, you see, so many of them are like side profiles or small pictures or like, like what is, like, eh, it's just bad. There's just not many, <laughs> not many to pick from at all, so. I never broke my old Crown Vic when I took it off with a flat head. Similar mirror style then, yeah. Yep, should be, um, Crown Vicks usually have that type of mirror bracket. The F-150s, it just depends on the model. Some of them have the more expensive mirror that doesn't come off um, without those clips, and then some are easy. So just like your Crown Vic, yeah, same style. He agreed to 20 C2 sides and back with a 5% uh, strip, 500. Nice, very nice. 3M guy still has the paperwork in the glove box. Damn. If he still has the paperwork, I'm surprised he's not taking it to uh, a 3M dealer and getting that shit replaced because unless the warranty expired years ago, I don't know exactly when it would. I mean, I don't expect a film to necessarily last like 12 years. Um, but the warranties, like, <laughs> most people don't keep their shit that long, so it's impressive. They sh they're like, if you do keep your car that long and whatever, unless it says in the fine print that it expires, like, lifetime warranty is, like, limited lifetime or can have lots of stipulations under it, but basically, as long as you own the car is typically what that warranty covers. But some people have said seven. Some people have said ten years. I mean, it does get a lot of abuse over the over years. So, who knows? I think vinyl sometimes is like. I think uh, flat glass. Like flat glass usually has like a ten year warranty before they actually have to like remove it and replace it. Oh, that was Avery. 
All right. So we're going to set up some super chats. A uh, big thank you to DW Tinting, RGC. Um, oh, yeah, you guys, you were super chatting while you were standing here. That's why I didn't get to these. <laughs> DW with a five, fog the customer. Thank you. RGC, uh, what out there now looks good. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. I remember there was some happening because you guys were trying to shoot fog machines at the customer. Uh, Mr. Fast Money, uh, Nick Doolin, and Efren. Oh, and Daniel Reyna and Alligator. Um, oh, and Antonio. Wow, there were quite a few more than I remember. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate all the support. Good stream today. Where's my stream window? Oh, it's over on this side. That was fun. So tomorrow we have a BMW something Grand Coupe. I don't know. A fancier one. I'm going to see if it says in my calendar if I forgot. Oh, he did. It's called a Grand Coupe, but it's a four-door. It's a 2014 BMW 640i. So I got this thing coming in tomorrow. I remember doing one of these on stream. Cool. So that'll be fun. Look forward to that. I will be back 10-ish for some good old fun. Um, I guess we're going to get a snowstorm, so I'm going to cut out of here. Y'all have a good one. <laughs> I'm going to frame my autograph triage and hand it in my shop. Nice. Thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> All righty, guys. I will see you tomorrow. You have a good one. Bye. Or we might break into my car, too. I don't know. <laughs>